Hey, good morning, good Senior morning, Chapel. Seniors. It's good to see you. And Noelle, you ever watched that movie Up? Remember yes, Up? it's one of my favorites. Yes, and there's a dog there, and his name is Doug, and he Doug. gets distracted by a squirrel. Yep. A squirrel. That's totally me right now with his, this look, water bottle. His look green at water this. bottle. It's green on a green screen, so it, it blends in. And like, look at this, blocking Noel's face. Isn't that awesome? No. I think it's pretty cool. Mm. <laughs> well, hey, <sighs> let's get rid of that distraction for a little bit and say good morning. We, good morning. we love that you're here with us this morning. Hi, Billy. Hi, Billy. Hey, Barbara Johnson. Hi, Grandma Johnson. Hi, Pat. Hey, well, it's good to see you. Let me pray, and then we'll spend some time with our uh, senior friends this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the ability to connect with one another, even in a time like this. God, you are our provider, and you are our source of joy, and we are thankful. Father, we love you, and I just pray for our senior friends who are watching with us today. I pray that you would bless them, fill them, Lord, with your love and your peace. I pray that you would bring them comfort and great joy as they go about their day. We love you and pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, we have some birthdays, and yes. normally we would do like a birthday shout out right now, but we hired uh, three people to do our three birthdays. Three of our favorite people in the whole wide world. Yes. Our kids made you guys a birthday video. Let's take a look. So let's check it out. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Kathy Tarpey. Leah Ferrisoli. Barbara Toman. Pat McCullough. Brian McCormick. And Bobby Dietzel. Happy birthday to you. Go, 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 There they were. Oh, super cute. Love them. Hi, kids. I think Good they're job. watching with you right now. Good job, Gwen and Grayson and Graham. We love, we love you. you. And happy birthday. Yeah, not to you three, but no. to the other people. Yes. Um, hey, look where we're at today. We are in vintage downtown Lancaster. You ever been to this place, Noel, called Shopping Bag? No, but I think it was on Avenue I. Is oh, it on Avenue I? I think so. It looks so. like I. There's a meat place over here. You want some meat? Yes, always. Williams Pharmacy. So cool. Nancy and Charlie Williams. Is that your pharmacy? Because if so, we will go there for all of our medical, medical things. Do you think any of these places are still around? Um, well, definitely not in the same location, no. but that would be really cool. That would be super cool. I think we should ask our seniors. Yes. Why don't you comment below or go to live at GCLancaster.com and tell us a favorite store that An you went older to. older store. Yep. That you went to as a kid. Yeah. I asked my mom and she said her favorites were Gemco and Fedmark because she would always run into somebody she knew there and that you could get everything there. So Nice. Does Gemco sell gems? Always. Yeah. And the FedMart sells Fed? No. I don't know. But no. yeah, please let us know. We would love to know uh, what were some of your favorite stores yes. back in the day. And if any are still around, yes. right? Well, I got so to go fun. hang out with a senior this week. Yeah. Who did I go see? Jeremy got to go visit Grandpa Norm. Yes, Grandpa Norm. We and love you. He's one of our favorites. And he has a greeting video that he would love to share with you. Hey, good morning, Senior Chapel. I am at the house of Norm Turners, although my family calls him Grandpa Norm. And we're going to check in and see how he's doing today. Let's do this. Oh, that kind of that kind of hurt. Jeremy, how are you, my friend? Good, Come how in. are you? Come in. Oh, thank so, you. Grandpa Norm, you are involved at Grace Chapel's Pen Pal Ministry. Tell us a little bit about what that ministry is and who you get to write to. Well, I, I thought that was such a great idea. You know, the older folks with the younger kids, you know, and, uh, and I was assigned a little girl. Uh, her name is Mia, Mia Bustillo. And I just... Oh, she is such an amazing little girl. She has the greatest penmanship that you've ever seen. And and she's always writing and telling me that uh, uh, she got an award from her teacher, you know, even when they're not going to school. And uh, I, I I just uh, think it's a, she's a great little girl. And 
the only problem is that I haven't met her in person, you know. <laughs> And uh, I would like to make arrangements, you know, to meet her in church and uh, second service, uh, the 11 o'clock service sometime. I would really like to meet her and her mama and her two little brothers. Mm. So, Grandpa Norm, why don't you go ahead and tell the seniors, what have you been up to the last few months? Well, in the last few months, I've been staying home and being bored most of the time, like most of them are. But, uh, you know, I, I've been keeping up with my hobbies. One of my favorite hobbies is collecting coins. And, uh, you know, the some of these coins are very strange. You know, these they, they're not flat, they're oval, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one favorite of mine is a, 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 a celebrating the 36th anniversary of Israel. Wow. And, uh, you know, and... Uh, like I say, that that's my hobbies, my, my coins. So which coin, I know because you have like hundreds and hundreds, which one is your most prized possession? I think uh, uh, a 1773 coin from the city of Hamburg before Hamburg was a city of Germany, before even Germany even existed. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. It's, very, very well preserved, you know, and uh, it's very, uh, I, I don't think it's very valuable, but to me it is. <laughs> is it gold or copper? No, or it's silver. Silver. It's silver, yeah. Wow. 99.9% .9 silver, so. Wow, okay. Yeah. I, and I, then, uh, as soon as I get up in the morning, the first thing I do, don't, I don't care what happens, I devote about 15, 20 minutes to the Lord. Mm. You know, I read my Bible and I read the daily bread. And, you know. All right. So, Grandpa Norm, for the longest time, because of your accent, I actually assumed you were Russian. <laughs> <laughs> and when I finally got the, the nerve to ask you where you were from, it was very different than Russia. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you grew up or where you grew up? Well, when they, they asked me about my accent, I always tell them that I'm from Boston. <laughs> but no, I was born in Chile, in South America, and I uh, I grew up there. I went to school there, and uh, uh, when I was 19 years old, I came to the States. I was here less than a month before I joined the Air Force, mm. and uh, you know during my time in the Air Force, during the four years in the Air Force, I came to California one time and I met Mabel, mm. my beautiful wife, and uh, maybe I should tell you about my hobbies. At one time, I used to love to do wood woodwork. Yeah. I I made this uh, grandfather clock. You made that? Yeah. And no I have, way. Yeah. And, uh, but watch out in the back. <laughs> And I, uh, but eventually, you know, I have a, a shop full of work, uh, woodwork material, but eventually wood got so expensive that it's not, you know, it's, uh, I don't enjoy <laughs> spending my money. <laughs> well, that is a great clock. And yeah. thank you for telling us a little bit about you. All right, Grandpa Norm. Well, thank you for letting me come to your house. Do you have any final words to the folks watching this? Yeah, uh, I just want to tell the seniors that I miss him and I love him. And my life without them is very lonely. But uh, I hope that the Lord fixes this problem soon and I get to see them. So goodbye and God bless. Well, Grandpa Norm, that was so much fun. Thanks for letting me into your home and checking in and see how you're doing. And uh, we love you so much. Grandpa Norm, it was so good to see you. Thanks for letting me come over and, yes. and talk with you a little bit this week. Let's talk about that clock. I know. Full on made a grandfather clock. Amazing. I can't that even make a crazy. birdhouse. Yeah. Good That's job, so Grandpa Norm. And thank you for the plums, too. Yeah, Grandpa Norm brought us a bag of plums, or we picked them up um, from his tree a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, and they were delicious. Yes. So thank you, Grandpa Norm. We miss you, and we just are so thankful for you. 
Hey, we're in Disneyland now, vintage Disneyland. And is that a Honda Civic? Is that what that yeah, is? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. We miss Disneyland. You know, I Disneyland love is closed Disneyland. right now. Disneyland. But my wallet is not missing mm. Disneyland. We're saving money by not going I miss there, the so. snacks. Yeah. And the smells. The popcorn. The popcorn. Mm -hmm. Apparently, who told us Gemco had popcorn? Yeah, who knew? Not gems, popcorn. It was a popcorn place, apparently. No, not popcorn. <laughs> it was an all-you-can-get amazing, like, I, I wish there was a Gemco. I want to go to a Gemco we right now. We have one now. It's called Five Below. No, you can get anything at not, Five Below. No. All right. Well, let's spend some time in worship. Pastor Dwayne has a worship video for us this morning. Mm, 
thank you, Pastor Dwayne. We love you and Kathy. You guys are great examples to the staff, and we're so thankful that we get to call you friends. Well, and we just look up to you guys. Yeah. You just love people well, and you serve God so faithfully. Yes. Hey, we have some other visitors that just popped in. Oh, thanks. Uh, Debbie Ellis. Hi, Debbie. We're so glad that you're here with us. Hi, Michelle Hunt. It's good to see and you. And Carol Moore. And Chris Van Gelder. Don Clark. Hi, Don. And Teresa Stern. Thanks yes. for joining us this yes. morning. And by the way, if you're just joining us, obviously we're in downtown vintage Lancaster. Don says this is Avenue I, I and right. 10th Street West. There you go. Avenue I. Uh, if you have a favorite store that you loved going to when you were a kiddo, would you comment below uh, on the YouTube channel or send us a, uh, an email at live at gclancaster.com. Right, yeah. Let us know. At the end, we're going to read some of those uh, stores, and so that way yeah. we can take a trip down We're getting lane. lots of Gemco's right now. Yes, lots of Gemco's apparently. All right, well, now Pastor Dwayne has a, a devotional video. That Pastor he would Pat. Oh, Pastor Pat, thank you, has a devotional that he would like to share with us. This week, we're going to go a little bit further in, into uh, Zacharias's praise. I mentioned it last week, but uh, today we get to hear exactly what he said. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people. And he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. And he spoke by his mouth, by his holy prophets from of old, salvation is from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, which is a quote of Psalm 106.10, to show mercy uh, toward our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham our father to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and in righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, that's out of Malachi, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise from on high shall visit us to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Is, is he rejoicing over the fact that John is here? Yes. Yes, he certainly is. He's, he's loving the fact that in his old age, in his wife's old age, they're their parents. What a tremendous joy, but he's looking forward. And he's looking to this as the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant. Now, the Abrahamic covenant, uh, generally by most theologians, is, is, is brought out of, uh, of basically three things. One, that he would have a son that it wouldn't be Ishmael, it would be a son from his own loins and, and Sarah's. Secondly, that, that he would have progeny, that, they, the, the, that he would fill the earth, the earth would be um, uh, blessed because of his offspring. And thirdly, because he would have land, all the land from the river of Egypt all the way up through the Euphrates. Those three things were, were seen as the Abrahamic covenant, but that's really not where God's focus is. See, John reveals much, much more about it. That yes, indeed, those three things are there, but they're there for a particular reason. The oath that he swore to Abraham our father to grant that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies may serve him without fear. See, the Abrahamic covenant wasn't for us and for the physical us. It was for the spiritual us. And this is the, the fulfillment. The fulfillment isn't going to be that Rome is going to be cast out. It's not going to be that, that, that men are going to have comfort and, and tremendous affluence and all of that. None of that is, is what God is talking about at this point. What he's talking about is the righteousness will be restored. The fact that we will now be able to, to serve God without fear. You can do whatever you need to do to my body. It will not matter. My spirit will serve the Lord. I will be at peace with him forever and ever. And holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. 
and then he speaks to his son and you kind of wonder if uh, if there had been a video camera would he would have said something to, to John as just as an encouragement but he says a new child will be called the prophet of the Most High remember it's been 430 some odd years since there's been a prophet in Israel and, and John the Baptist is going to be that prophet in in in, in word and in deed and you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways out of Malachi, I think. I think that Zacharias had in those last nine months become an absolute expert on the book of Malachi. To give the people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of God from which the sunrise from on high shall visit us. It is Christ-centric. Our praise will always be Christ-centric. Don't, don't ever forget that He is central and He desires us and He desires our heart and He's made it possible for us to walk with Him without any fear. Lord bless you. Thank you, Pastor Pat. Uh, I'm thankful for your brain. I really am. You are a thinker, and I, I thank you for all the devotionals that you continue to send into, into Senior Hour. Well, as you can see now, we're in the background of a Thomas Kincaid puzzle. And uh, how many of you have done those puzzles before? They were a big hit back we in the day. We love puzzles. We do love puzzles. It's, puzzles are a, every time we go on vacation, we bring a puzzle with us to yes. do at like a cabin or whatnot. Mm -hmm. We love doing them. Now, well, have you ever done a puzzle that has a missing piece? You get all the way, you think you have it all, and then there's just that one open yep. spot. 999 pieces, and then there's one missing. No thousand. <laughs> Not fun. <laughs> but uh, it got me thinking, when there's a missing puzzle piece, uh, we begin to think like we need it, right? And so we're looking around and we're trying to find we it. We search, thinking, like, yeah, like we need that last piece, right? Doing a puzzle with three children Oh yeah, there's. It's a whole new ball game. There's a lot of missing pieces with children, but well, not them missing the pieces, no. but you know, misplacing. Well, we wanted to share a devotional with you today, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about so-called needs, right? The idea of needing a missing piece. We're going to talk about need this mm -hmm. morning, and we figured we would share with you our favorite devotional, which is Paul David Tripp's New Morning Mercies. Yes, Noel, do you like that devotional? I really enjoy this devotional. Um, it just helps me when I get, I don't know, all jumbled up and I'm thinking horizontally. It helps me put my focus back vertically on just the Lord and fix my eyes on the Lord and Jesus. Mm. Yeah, when we have our vertical relationship with God, right? Mm. It helps us have our horizontal Clearly relationships see right, with people. All the other. Well, let's actually read July 10th, our July 10th devotional. Uh, we're, we thought it would be fun for us to, to read that just a page long, and then we'll comment about, you know, what we'll we're thinking about, about this, uh, this de Devo. All right. July 10th. <clears throat> it may be the sloppiest, most all-inclusive word used in human language. The word is need. Mm. We put far too many things into our need category. That's why Jesus reminds us that we have a heavenly father who knows exactly what we need. Embedded in that reminder are both a comfort and a confrontation. Mm. The comfort is that there is one who once created and now controls everything that is and who has unleashed his awesome power so that you and I may receive from his hand every good thing that we need so mm -hmm. to, be uh, to be what we were designed to be and to do what we have been called to do. You see, no need has been unmet by his gracious hands. But this statement also carries with it a humbling rebuke. We need a heavenly father who knows what we need because we do not know what no. we need. We want and need, oh, we get want and need confused all the time. Here's how need driven addiction develops. And he calls that need driven addiction, spiritual slavery. Here's how it starts. It all starts with desire. I want. 
There is nothing evil about desire. God created us, created us with the capacity to desire. Everything we say and do is the product of desire. Yet it is very hard for sinners to hold desire with an open mm. hand. It doesn't take long for our desires to morph into demands or I must. The thing that was once a desire is now taking a hold of us. We're less willing to live without it. We're more and more convinced that we have to have it. And then demand morphs into need, which is I will. Now, with great resolve and surety, we are convinced that we cannot live without it. This thing that was once an open-handed desire has been christened a need. We're now fully convinced that it would be impossible to live without it. Mm. It is now in control of our hearts. We think about it all the time. We are fearful when we're without it. We plot how to keep it in our lives. Mm. But the cycle of slavery does not end there. You see, need then forms into expectation as to what God ought to do, which is us mm. telling God, you should. You see, if we're convinced it's a need, you will think you're entitled to it. You will be convinced that you have the right to demand it, and you will judge God's love by his willingness to deliver it. Expectation then leads to disappointment if God mm. doesn't deliver, or the idea of you didn't. We can't believe that God would say that he loves us and yet has not met our so-called needs. The fact is, God has been faithful to all that he's promised mm. to us, but this desire that morphed into a need is not something he's promised to give us. So disappointment leads us to some kind of anger, or mm. because you didn't, I will. Because we now judge God as unfaithful, we quit trusting him as we should, and we let go of our good habits of faith. Isn't it good to know that Jesus came to free us from that idolatry? Let's comment a little bit on that, honey. Yeah. You know, have you ever wanted something so badly and that want turns into a need? It overtakes you. Yeah, completely controls you. And I think that's when we put that idol, whatever it is, um, in the place of God. And we just crave and crave. God made us to be craving humans, but yeah. we forget that God really does promise and give us everything that we truly need is yeah. found in him. Mm -hmm. And we have three little ones and they use the, the want, they get easily confused with wants and needs all the mm. time with toys and snacks. And it's kind of, it's, it's pretty easy to, to teach them. But I think for ourselves, it's, it's difficult for us to evaluate our hearts and see what is actually a need versus a want. Yeah. And I think we just have to always be willing to just go before the Lord and he will tell us or he'll show us in his word mm -hmm. and in prayer. Like, yeah. Pastor Dean, uh, Dean Spolstra, he used to be mm -hmm. a pastor here at this church. He's now a senior pastor Palmdale. over at Palmdale Community Church. Uh, he taught me that early on. I was struggling with needs and wants early on in our marriage and when mm -hmm. I was younger. And he said, Jeremy, you know, you need to sit on an item before you actually go buy that item, right? Like, ask God if this is something that you should have. Ask God if this is something that you should spend your money on. And he actually gave us the idea of debit card fasts. Every once in a while in, in, yeah. our, in, our, in our marriage, we will have a debit card fast. We will put our cards away and we'll say, okay, let's go a few days without spending. Just to, you know, put that in its proper place and to say, you know what? Maybe those things aren't necessarily needs, and let's call it what it is. They're actually wants. wants. And so let's really trust the Lord and remember that he is a good father. He's provided everything that we could ever need. Well, and I love how in this he says that embedded in the reminder that God gives us in his word, he uses it with comfort and confrontation. Like he doesn't just confront us and, you know, yeah. sometimes he does, but he always does it in a comforting way. Yeah, he's so gracious. Mm -hmm. And I like what Paul David Tripp says. He, he calls it what it is. He calls this idea of, of wanting something all the time, he calls it need-driven addiction. Mm -hmm. It really has a, a, an addictive um, behavior to it. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, when you think you have a need, your mind and your energy and your focus all goes to that one to thing. That, instead of serving the Lord. Yeah. And no wonder why that's called idolatry, right? Because yeah. anything that we place in front of God is idolatry. Mm. What else did you, did you see in here? I like that he said, need forms expectation as what we 
as what God ought to do. Yeah. Right? Kind of, we try to force God's hand, like, you ought to do this for us. Well, and even when we don't see God's plan and whatever trial we're going through, we're still called to obey. And I think we constantly tell our kids to obey all the way, right away with a happy heart. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. Mm -hmm. And when God tells us no for a, maybe a desire or a want that we have. Or shuts the door. Then we have to be okay with that. Mm. And that shows what complete trust and submission, right? That we're willing to go without something that we think we might want in order to trust God and place our faith in Him. Well, and the fact that He saved us from ourselves when we were dead. We were dead in our trespasses. Mm -hmm. um, I hate that we just serve a gracious Father that not only did He save us from ourselves, He gives us heaven mm. by His Word and by His blood. Yeah. Well, let me pray, and then we'll transition to a, a really fun, yeah. uh, fun game that we have for you We got morning. to play. Father, I, I thank you for uh, giving us all that we could ever need. Definitely. Lord, you have supplied for us not only breath of life, but also the hope of heaven because of what your son has mm. done for us, Lord. And so as your kids here on earth, even in crazy times like this, we rest in you knowing that you continue to give us all that we need. God, I pray that you would hear our cry, that when there are things in our lives that we think that we have that, or that we don't have that we want, I pray that you would help us to put those things in, our proper, in, the, in its proper place. And Lord, I pray that our eyes and our focus would be on you. God, thank you for supplying us our every need. You feed the birds, you clothe the flowers, mm. you will take care of us. We love you, Lord, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. So yeah, we played a game with who? We got to play a game with Vince and Lori Castorio. So last week, Michael and Brittany played time travel trivia. Yep, against the Kendalls. And gets the Kendalls. And the Kendalls won. So it was seniors won. Youth you, well, zero. Yes. Well, middle-aged middle. people, <laughs> zero. So now let's see if we can even the score. We got to play. Let's go take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time for Time Travel Trivia, featuring Vince and Lori Custodio versus Jeremy and Noel Hartley. All right, welcome to Time Travel Trivia with Vince and Lori Custodio. Hey, Yay! Vince and Lori. Last week, Michael and Brittany uh, lost to the Kendalls, so seniors won, youth zero, and we will see if the youth today will tie it up or if the seniors will take a 2-0 lead. Did, did so, you say youth or youth? Youth, youth. Oh, I thought you said youth. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. <laughs> so here's how it works. We're gonna ask you questions from our era and you're gonna ask us questions from your era and we're gonna see at the end of the little episode who has the most points and we will get started. All right, Vince and Lori, <laughs> what? is a Tamagotchi. Okay, spell that and use it in a sentence, please. <laughs> I, I got works. my daughter a Tamagotchi for Christmas. Oh, now you, they at least know it's a it's toy. A present. No, I would say a Tamagotchi is a gift mainly given at Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you can't give them helps. Uh, I got you, Vince. Does, I got Lori, you. Lori, any recollection? I've heard it, but I can't remember. All right. A Tamagotchi is a little digital pet, and it's this, it looks like a little Game Boy, and you take care of this digital pet. pet? We loved them when we were yes. kids. It was all the rage yes. in the 90s. Yeah. Oh, that's a and robot. It, yeah. <laughs> yes. And if you didn't take care of it, it, it would died. Die. Yeah. It <laughs> put a lot of guilt on nine-year-olds. So, so the correct answer is robot. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Sure. So I would say zero for you guys, but that's okay. Now you guys ask us the next question. Okay. What year did the Beatles officially disband? So the Beatles are a band, is that right? Like your shirt? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Oh. So this could have been like a computer company and they disbanded. No, Maybe. you know who the Beatles are. <laughs> 
All right. This well, is kind uh, of. This I'm is not good with dates. I know they're popular in the '60s, but like, how long does a band last? Do you know? It's the Beatles. I would say '74. I mean, that's '74. I'm out of here. Did I get it right? No, absolutely, <laughs> not. absolutely not. It was 71. Oh, oh I'm only three years off. That's not bad. This is, this is, you know, the moonwalk is following this, right? There's an importance of the world events. Like Michael Jackson moonwalk? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like that. No. That oh, like moon. the actual moon. I'm sorry. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Question number three. It's zero zero. Noel, go ahead. What is the floss dance? The what? The floss dance. It's a oh. dance move. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Can, oh. can you describe it? You can describe it. Yeah. Yes. Good job. <laughs> it's got it. You know what? Yeah. yeah. Like that. Those are my Good job. those are my swim trunks, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was going to have Lori do it for you, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> well, seniors have a point. You guys move forward with the next question. Okay. What... Oh, excuse me. Which famous singer of the oh, 40s so. and 50s had the nickname Old Blue Eyes? <gasps> Frank Sinatra. Oh. <laughs> it is definitely Frank Sinatra. He was the second Beatle. <laughs> who, who was <laughs> Congrats. Okay, you got it. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Sinatra. Good job. All right. Okay. Well. Hmm. Question three. Question three to the custodios. What is a meme? A memes except meals. <laughs> it's, not, it's an acronym. It's an acronym, really. Yeah. Totally. No, we're not <laughs> even close. A meme. I like that one better, though. A meme is a funny picture with a caption after describing that. something. And after this interview, I'll send you a meme. <laughs> and you, you will go, wait, what I, is We're I, not going to be associating, communicating after this. So. <laughs> <laughs> this we're on your list. That's right. What? Did the U.S. Postal Service add in 1963 that is part of every address today? No. Hold on, hold on. No, 1963. So that was before or after the Pony Express. I'm thinking, okay, the Pony Express was done. They added, okay, Noel's thinking zip code. Your so. wife is very smart. Is it zip code? <laughs> nice. So wait, wait. Then. Oh, as a Christian. When you were a child, Vince, what was your zip code? <laughs> Five? Just, <laughs> Just talk to me, Vince. Okay. I'm the most loved heart. Noel, take your right arm again and push harder. <laughs> there you go. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Custodios. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We, we get a point, so it's two to one. Well, <laughs> what did I do wrong this time? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, here we go. Next question. What state is Justin Bieber from? State? That's a trick question. Why? Because they have provinces in Canada. Oh, it's true! I was convinced you would not have gotten that. Look at that. I even told Noel before. I was like, ooh, I'm going to trip. You were convinced? Get it? Convinced? <laughs> convinced? Sorry. Noel, your right hand and arm again. <laughs> <laughs> Just me. All right. Okay. We are through round three, and okay. it is two to two, or two to two. Ward and June were two main characters from what famous TV show? of the late 50s and early 60s. Well, if you would have watched last month Senior Hour with Jeremy and Noel, you would have known that we sat on the set of... Leave it to Beaver? Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. We, we did watch that, 
I kind of fell asleep. But <laughs> oh, 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 oh. words. <laughs> <laughs> what are silly bands? What are silly bands? With a Z at the end of bands. Oh, it does. Oh, I almost said the wrong thing. <laughs> the I'm Z. Sure. I'm sure. Bands. It sounds familiar, but. Some chill. A, no, to be specific, it's a children's toy. That they give away at Christmas. <laughs> For the very special ones. You probably have never received one. <laughs> That's true. No. All right. They are in the four, they're, they're bracelets. They're bracelets, but they're in a different forms of like. A butterfly. Yeah, a dog. I'll, I'll text you that too at it's, the end of this. It's for children's entertainment, thus. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you a half a point. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's three to two and a half. Okay. And it is your turn to ask the last question. What are the names of the three Stooges? Cur Curly for sure. And then Larry and Moe. Larry and Moe. Okay, good. spell Curly. <laughs> <laughs> One L or two. E. <laughs> it does not end with a Z, Curly's. Uh, All okay. right. So smart. I want to do over sometime. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. we'll rematch. We'll do one off the record later. Okay. Uh, well, My last, last question, question for you guys. Okay. What is a GIF? G I F. Oh. Oh, I can picture it's, it. It's it's down in my lower <laughs> right, lower right hand corner of my text messages. <laughs> I'm gonna show you a GIF. You know what? If you can show me a GIF, I will give you the point. <laughs> Isn't it? I thought it was GIF. Or it could be, yeah, yeah. but you know, yeah, yeah. Lori, you actually entered a big tomato, debate. tomato. So, so many people think it's a GIF. I call it GIF. I don't even know what it is. What is it, Vince? Can you show me? Can you show me that? Where is this? No, do it again. <laughs> a GIF is a moving image, oh. usually for humor. Those are gifts. No, no. Well, is your right arm sore? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Vince and Lori, thank you so much for joining. Yes, thank you for joining us. I, I'm afraid to say I think the youth won, but barely. Rematch. We will do a rematch. Expect okay. us to do that good anyway. You guys yeah, are great. awesome. Love you. Bye. We love, love you. you. Bye, custodios. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Vince and Lori. So much fun. You guys are hilarious. And we just, we just want to come Zoom with you guys again yes. next week just for fun. For right? Christmas? Yes. Expect a present. Yep. Well, we'll Tamagotchis. A, oh, yeah. And Silly bands. Silly bands. Yep. Yep. And, and you guys can get us Beatles tickets. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. No Beatles <laughs> tickets. Um, there won't be concerts for a while anyway. It's okay. All right, so uh, now, hey, look at we're back in Lancaster, 19, you know, 50s, 60s, and whatnot, yes. and you guys have commented on some mm -hmm. of your stores, so. Let's see, uh, Carol Moore, Gemco. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lloyd and Sharon Fru, welcome, Hi glad guys. you're here. so glad you're here. And also Shelly Puckett, Cheryl Reynolds' mom, good Hi, to see Shelly. you. We love you. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Uh, Pat also said Jimco. Yep, Chris Van Glender, popcorn. See, the popcorn. I feel like I'm missing out on the popcorn. Yes. Uh, Carol, I guess you had to have a special card to go to Fedco, like a Costco card maybe? Maybe. Yep, yep. Teresa Stern, Jemco. And Yvonne says, I loved Woolworths um, because yes. there was good ice cream there. So, And then Michelle Hunt also said Woolworths, and they, they had popcorn too. Man, Lancaster is all about the popcorn. Maybe Come we're the on, popcorn capital bring it back. of no, California. We're not. No. That's all right. All right, Judy Hutton. Oh, we love you, Judy. She actually went to Shopping Bag, this place over here. Yes. Okay. Shopping Bag. Very cool. So fun. Uh, and Wenchel's Donuts. Yes. Love it. Well, um, seniors, I think that's it. We love you.
We really do, and we miss you, and we're so glad that we got to join you We love this morning. spending Fridays with you. It's yes. the highlight of our week. And why don't we, before we go into a, another video here with Pastor Dwayne, let me pray for you, and then uh, we will worship one more time. Father, thank you for uh, this wonderful group that we get to uh, join with each Friday. I pray mm -hmm. that you would bless them. God, give them great joy and peace in, in the middle of uncertainty. God, we are thankful that you are our provider who gives us everything we need. We love you so much, and we look forward to the day that we are with you. Mm -hmm. But while we're here on earth, help us to give you glory, to give you all the praise, and to place our trust in you. Yes. Father, we love you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, bye, seniors. Bye, seniors. Take my life and let it be. Take my life and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my voice and let me sing Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages from Thee Filled with messages from Thee silver and my gold not a mite would I withhold take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose every power as thou shalt choose So